Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video, thank you so much for being here. In today's video, in a nutshell, we are going to see how to properly back up your NAS. You heard me right, not how to back up data to your NAS, but how to back up the data that's already on your NAS. And why? There are plenty of reasons your NAS can, I don't know, catch fire. Your NAS can maybe uh, uh, get hit by ransomware. We are going to see how to create a backup of the data on your NAS, preferably to some resource off-site, and have a copy of your data that's restorable in case an emergency happens. We are going to do it with Synology Hyper Backup. That's an application that's available to download from the package center. And we are going to see how to properly use it to make your, your NAS safe and not have it as a, a, as a single point of failure where if it breaks, all the data is gone. You need to create backup of your NAS. If you're not doing it already, you have to watch this video. So let's go over to the computer and see how this is done. Join me. All right, guys, so we are at the computer and we are talking about how to backup the data that is already on your NAS to a different location, preferably off-site. According to the 3 to 1 backup strategy, you must have at least one copy of your data off-site. So in case something happens to your NAS, it catches fire, it catches ransomware or something, you will have a restorable copy of your data from an off-site location because if you're not doing it and you do use your NAS to back up uh, data from your computers or phones or something, your NAS become a single point of failure and, and if, it's, if, you, if something happens to it, all your data is gone. So the way we are doing it in the Synology world, we will be using Hyper Backup and on the second NAS we are using on this demo, we will need to install Hyper Backup Vault but I am going to show how to do it also to a, a cloud location. So keep watching. This will come later in the video. So in order, in order to bring everything down to earth, let's dive right in to our Synology devices and let's start connecting the puzzle pieces. This is my, uh, let's say, so-called production NAS with data on it. And as you can see, I've created a shared folder called critical data and I just dumped into it random files and folders and uh, uh, pictures and this will uh, uh, mimic a, 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 shared, a shared folder with critical data that we need to back up. Alright, so this is, uh, this is our source side and now there is also, at least in this demo, we are backing up our NAS, our Synology NAS to a different Synology NAS that is off-site. All right, so in order, to, in order to demo this, I've created a virtual DSM. By the way, if you haven't watched our, our video on how to create a virtual DSM virtual machine, I will put a link to this video in the top right corner. Be sure to watch it. And this is our, uh, let's say, off-site uh, um, uh, Synology device. This can be done, by the way, if you have a friend that have a Synology NAS, you can exchange uh, backups. Uh, you will backup to him, he will backup to you. You just uh, create shared folder to each other. And if you want to also, you can also uh, enforce a quota, but this is a, a bit off topic. I will maybe review it later in this, in this video. So in order to create the backup task of one Synology, to another Synology device. On the destination NAS, this will be the destination NAS, we will need to install this Hyper Backup Vault. It's available to install from the package center. All right, it's right here, Hyper Backup Vault. Now I've already installed it and there's nothing really to configure here. Almost nothing, just maybe the number of con concurrent tasks, I will raise it to two. Nothing to configure on the destination side. And now, let's say that this device is really off-site. Maybe it's not a device that we can log into. We just got its uh, 
maybe quick connect a, a, a string or maybe it's public IP address or a, a public FQDN. Of course, if it's really off-site, uh, there, there is a port you will need uh, to open or make sure open. I will, of course, show this port uh, as we go on through this demo. But the first thing that we will need to do is on the source side, we will open hyper backup. And since we don't have any backup tasks yet, we are automatically presented with a, cre a backup creation wizard. And in this case, we will choose a remote NAS device, but as you can see, there are a lot of other options. You can use rsync, for example, if you have a different NAS or a, 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 more accurately, a different vendor NAS, like a, a, a true NAS or something, this can work over rsync and it works just as well. And you can also create backup tasks to a, a, to a cloud location if you, a, a, of course, have enough capacity. But we will, at least in this portion of the demo, we will focus on remote NAS device and click on next. And here we will need to, uh, to put in either the quick connect uh, identity or the FQDN, or if it's internal, then the IP address. But since it's internal, it's another, it's really inside my network. If I just click on the down arrow, what will happen is like, when you launch find.synology.com in your browser, it will just search around your network to see if there are other Synology devices present and it will present you with a list. As you can see, it found another device and this is our destination. But again, we could have just typed the quick connect device ID string and it will work just as well. And this is the port you need to make sure that's open. 6281, you will need to open this device in the, in the firewall of the destination side. Okay, that's the only restriction, so-called. So let's choose our off-site device. And I do want to uh, uh, encrypt the transfer. By the way, I do recommend because it, in, it encrypts the data before it leaves your NAS. So that's a, 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 that's a great way to make sure your data is safe. I'm going to trust the certificate because I didn't uh, upload a certificate in the destination yet. I'm going to log in. And now I'm going to select a shared folder I pre-created on the destination as I called it hyper backup and it's going to create a directory. Let's call it critical. And I'm going to click on next and I'm going to choose which shared folders on my source NAS I want to back up. So I'll choose my critical data folder, click on next. I'm not going to bother with application settings backup. I'm going to click on next. Let's give this task a name critical. I want to be notified uh, when this finishes. I am going to run it on a schedule, let's say daily at three o'clock. That's great. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, uh, to bother with, uh, with the schedule. If I want to enable client-side encryption, that means that uh, when the data arrives at the destination, it will be encrypted. This is something that you need to, uh, to consider on your own. I'm not going to bother with it right now, although it is a good idea to encrypt the data over the destination because you don't know what people on the destination will try to reach your data. So it will be a good idea to, uh, 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 to select that. Backup rotation, that's great. I'm going to choose Smart Recycle. I'm not too worried about the number of versions, so I'm just going to keep 10. And I'm going to click on done. At this point, our backup task is being created and the Synology hyper backup application is going to ask me if I want to launch a backup right away. So here it is. I'm going to click on yes. Why not? And this backup task with a schedule and all the settings is created. And the first backup was launched by me just to get a backup going. 
So right now we can view on the destination as we can see that there is some uh, 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 network traffic that is going to start pretty soon. Here it is, it already launched. You can see the spike over here. There is not a lot of data in this demo folder. So this is going to end, I think, very, uh, very fast. All right, it's already successful. That's great. So this is how easy it is to back up your NAS to a different NAS, an, uh, an, ex an external resource or something that is uh, uh, keeping some copies of your data off-site, preferably off-site. And as I said before, not everyone that has a Synology has a second Synology to backup to. So what you can do if you don't have a friend or somewhere off-site you can back up uh, to. Synology also recognizes that even if you don't have a second NAS, you still need in some way to back up the data on your NAS. And this is exactly what Synology is offering with Synology C2 Cloud. It's like having an off-site Synology NAS, but it's really in the cloud and it's restorable exactly as if it was on a, on a second NAS, Synology NAS somewhere. So this is how you create a, a, a Synology C2 Cloud backup desk. Of course, you will need to sign up for it. I strongly recommend that you do. It's worth every penny. So I'm going to click on the plus button to create a new backup desk, data backup desk. And now I'm going to choose Synology C2 Storage and now I will need to log in. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I already have a C2 account. I'm going to agree and click on yes. And I'm going to create a new backup task. I'm going to, to call it critical. I'm going to select my shared folder. As you can see, you don't need to log in or even search for a, for a NAS in your network. Synology C2 already takes care of all the, uh, the bits and bytes. All you have to do is log in and select your shared folder. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to call this task dash critical, Synology C2 dash critical. And exactly the same as before, I'm going to uh, enable a notification. I'm going to run it on a schedule. I'm going to select a, a client side encryption. Although it's a good idea, I'm not going to bother it uh, with it in this demo and click on done. And I'm going to choose to backup now. Indeed. So exactly like before, now the backup task will backup our Synology or our shared folder data to Synology Cloud and it will be restorable exactly as it was if it was backed up to a second NAS, exactly the same, really fast, really easy, almost no, no fuss. And I do want to show uh, 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 at least uh, uh, part of the restoration if indeed something happens and data gets deleted from the shared folder itself. I'm going to go into my file station, into the critical data folder. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the, for the uh, backup to complete. And it's complete, that's great. So now I'm going to choose every file in this folder and delete. And as you can see, the shared folder is now completely empty. Something happened to my NAS, it caught fire, I got ransomware, I needed to maybe some, some, for some reason to factory reset it, everything got deleted, but now I have my backup tasks and I'm going to do it even, uh, I'm going to go even a little deeper. Again, I'm going to delete every file on the source 
and I'm also going to delete the backup tasks. Let's say something happened to my NAS, I needed to replace it, I bought a new NAS, something happened, I needed to factory reset my NAS, and now my hyper backup window is completely empty, but I do want to restore my data, even though it's not showing up here. So let's go to restore data, and as you can see, I have no destinations. So I'm going to choose restore from existing repositories. I'm going to choose my second NAS for this example. I am going to select it from the, uh, from the list that will be populated in a second. And now I'm going to choose the shared folder hyper backup. The, the directory is now showing up automatically. I'm going to click on next. I'm not going to restore system configuration. I'm going to select the shared folder. That's great. I'm going to click on done. And now again, as if nothing happened, as if I didn't need to replace my entire Synology uh, uh, device, as if I didn't need to factory reset my device. I, now, I am now at the same starting point that I was before with all my data intact. And now I can go ahead and recreate the backup tasks because they do need uh, to be recreated and uh, schedule redefined and etc. etc. But my data was always safe. So this is how you back up the data on your NAS. It's extremely important. If this was helpful to you, if you liked it, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you, so you will be notified when new videos come out. And again, join me in the next video. I do appreciate every button, every like, every subscribe. It really helps the channel. Keep it going, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.